All right, folks. Well, welcome back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. You are listening to the Dr. Luis Sandoval Show. Let me tell you, folks, the most important thing we can do is join our life to Christ. Ultimately, that's our goal, right? Why is it that Christ left us communion, holy communion? Why is it that Christ left us the sacrament of confession, where I need to get closer to Christ? Because that's all he wants for us. Our interior life the same way that I get to know people through therapy and I go deep and I ask them questions and I see what they're about. If I'm going to join my interior life to the fullest, if I'm going to open up that video game inside of me and go on these adventures and pray for the people in purgatory and ask the people in heaven to pray for us and get to know our Lord and our lady the most, I think I have to sit down and I have to ask them how they are doing. I need to get to know Christ. How do I know Christ if I'm always asking him questions and I'm always telling him what I need and what I want, and I don't stop and ask him, Lord, what's going on with you? How are you feeling? How do you feel now that you've resurrected everything you went through? What was that like for you to be on that cross? I mean, I cannot even imagine. And you did it for me. I mean, it's easy for me to think of that you did it for yourself or you gained glory or, or, but I got to realize you didn't need to do it. You're God. You don't need me at all. You didn't need to do any of that. How do you feel about me right now? Am I doing okay for you? Am I? What do you need from me right now? You need me to pray for that person across the world, and I'm never going to know what the fruits of my labor, but you need that for me? I'm going to go ahead and do that. Do we sit down? Our Lady, how are you doing? What was life like for you? Do we sit down and have a personal conversation with our family in heaven? I wonder about that because that's our interior interior life. How am I going to get to know them? Am I honest with God? A lot of times we come to pray with God and we want to put our, our best face forward. And we, you know, we come to pray and we want to look like we're perfect. Just like Jesus said in the, in the, in the gospel, the parable of the, the uh, uh, Pharisee who was praying in the front and saying, Lord, thank you for not making me like this terrible tax collector in the back of the church. Right? Do we, I come to God and show him how great I am? Or do I sit there with God and say, God, I'm really struggling with this right now. You know, this is this is a temptation I have, and it's hard for me to overcome it. That's what's going on in my interior life, and I'm sorry about that. I want to get over this, but I don't know how. You know, gosh, I'm I keep gossiping about people, and I don't know I don't know how to stop it. And I recognize that I'm doing it, but I don't know. That's what's going on in my interior life. Or, geez, Lord, you know, I can't stop watching pornography. I don't know why. Or I know I shouldn't be dating this girl, and but I'm in this relationship. I don't know how to get out of it. Or I keep having sex with my boyfriend, and I feel really bad. But, God, please help me understand why I'm doing this. Do we actually have that sit-down therapy conversation with Christ? I think in order to do that, sometimes it's hard to be guided because – yeah, unless you have a good spiritual director who understands that, who understands that God, that Jesus was became human so we could talk to him from a human perspective, and that we have God the Father and the Holy Spirit so we can tap into the divine life. I think it's hard to really sit down and do that because the world keeps us too busy. What I would recommend for everybody is to read a book called The Imitation of Christ. It's written by Tomasa Kempis. It's the Imitation of Christ. And if you look at chapter two, chapter two is, in, or book two, excuse me, it's split up into books called Considerations for Interior Life. The remainder of the show, I just want to read a little bit about this because this is how we kind of get to our spiritual journey. This is how we're going to find peace among ourselves. I'm going to read a little bit about from the first book, and then I'm just going to read, um, excuse me, from the first chapter. And then I'm just going to read the first sentence of every chapter is about 15 chapters in book two here. And it's all about considerations for interior life. This is ultimate therapy. This is ultimate high yield spiritual therapy for us. Listen to this. If all goes well with you on earth, how can you expect to be crowned in heaven for the, for the patience you never practice? How can you be Christ's friend if you will not be opposed? Therefore, you must suffer with Christ and for Christ if you want to reign with him. Can you dare complain when Christ was so willing to suffer and be despised? Do you expect all to be your friends and patrons when Christ was surrounded by enemies and slanders? This is important in the interior life because if I'm going to join myself to Christ, I got to understand spiritually, if I want to have that peace that Pope John Paul II had, I got to understand that there's going to be an internal spiritual battle with the world. The world wasn't kind to Christ. They're not going to be kind to us, but that's going to join me to Christ. I think it's worth the battle. Listen to this. If you once, if once you had entered into the interior life of Jesus and there tasted a little of his ardent love, you would not consider your own convenience or inconvenience 
but you would even rejoice over insults done to you, for love of Jesus would urge you to despise yourself. It's funny, when, when Pope St. John Paul II drove by, I thought nothing of myself at all. That moment of joy, it was, I can't even describe it. It was all about, I was experiencing joy, and all I wanted to do with that joy was share the joy. I didn't want it for myself. I had it. It's like I experienced it and I wanted to share it with other people. All I could equate that to is like winning the lottery and just wanting to give it away because you're going to see how happy other people are. That sense of joy, you wanted to talk to other people to describe it. And you're describing it. You would hope that they would share it. But we all shared it at the same time. It was like a little taste of heaven. That's really what it was being in the presence of Christ. I can't, I can't deny it. I can't explain it. There's nothing, there's something very spiritually scientific about it, but nothing that the science of this world would ever touch. It's hard to describe. Let's keep reading here. Those who love Jesus and the truth, who lead an interior life free from unruly affections, can turn to God at will, lift themselves up in spirit, and repose in Christ with joy. They are wise who observe things as they are and not by what is said about them or by the value put on them, for they are taught by God and not by humans. When we tap into that interior life with Christ, God's going to let us see things for what they are. This is what I'm talking about. He's going to let us see that that person who's really mean and ornery and who's who's saying bad words to everybody and whatnot, I'm going to be able to see that, and I'm going to be able to look past that, and I'm going to be able to see that person's really hurting. Why? Because that's the way God sees it. As human beings, we say, man, that person's terrible. Maybe they need to get arrested. What do they do? Put them in jail. Punish them. God doesn't see us that way. I can tell you when I experienced that joy, there was no sense of punishment. There was no sense of telling anybody anything bad. It was all about uplifting people. And it was all about finding the good. Like I could turn around and if there were a burglar there at that moment, I would turn around and with that joy I felt and I would tell them, oh, trust me, you don't want any of that. Let me let me share this joy with you. You're going to want to leave all of that. Let's get reading here. Those who can raise their minds to God with little regard to outward things do not need to look for a place or time to pray or to do good deeds. You're going to pray all the time. You're just going to be in constant prayer. You're going to live life. You're going to go through the motions. You're going to get up. You're going to talk to people. You're going to do your job. You're going to do everything you need to do in constant conversation with God. There's no question about it. For interior persons, not being wholly occupied with things of sense, meaning the senses, can easily fix their mind on God. The exterior work is no obstacle to them, nor is any necessary employment. They will apply themselves to each in turn and refer all to the will of God. Once we reach that interior life with God, we realize that emotions get in the way. How I feel about things get in the way. I feel happy about this. I feel sad about that. I don't know how I feel about that. We're going to realize that God's joy comes from an intellectual, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it because it's what God wants me to do. And once I do that, then I'm going to have happiness and I'm going to have peace and joy. If your soul is well disposed and disciplined, you will not be surprised or disturbed by the perverse conduct of others. Just like I was saying, you will be hindered and distracted to the extent that you are taken up with worldly matters. If I worry so much about the world and what's going on in the world, I'm always going to be hindered and I'm always going to be distracted. But if I worry about what's going on in the spiritual world, if I turn on that video game and enter the world of spirituality, of Catholic spirituality, of understanding what God wants, I'm never going to be hindered. Let's keep reading here. If you were well purified from worldly attachments, whatever happens would turn to your spiritual profit and to an increase of grace and virtue in your soul. But because of your excess love of earthly things, many things displease and annoy you. This is true. The reason that people feel displeased and annoyed, if you look at society right now, how many people are truly happy or how much is everything a battle of, listen to what they said and look at what they're doing and they do this. And they, it's like this war among ourselves. It's everything is displeasing. Everything's annoying. Why is that? Because we're not purified from the world because we haven't turned to God. Nothing so defiles and ensnares a person's heart as the undisciplined love of created things. If you will refuse outward consolations, then you will think of heavenly things and continually give praise to him with a joyful heart. Well, that's pretty deep. What I want to do here now, that was just from the first chapter in the book. You know, it really leads us to realizing that interior life. Sometimes we feel like well, I need to go to a therapist because I don't feel good inside. I don't feel like things are right inside. And I think that's a great place to start. We have to start with asking the question, why do I feel how I feel? And of course, we understand it from our senses. You know, I don't feel good. That didn't look good. I, that didn't sound good. 
That's how we start. But as we go deeper and deeper into that subconscious, if we just stop at the world and material things and we don't get into that video game sense, if you will, of a spiritual life, I'm not going to live those spiritual adventures with Christ. That's going to be lacking. I'm never, I'm never going to reach that sense of joy and peace. We don't teach peace in therapy. We teach how not to be depressed. We teach how not to be anxious. But we don't take that step further. If you ever notice, you never go to a therapist who tells you, hey, let's get you to a state of joy. It's not taught. It's not part of our science. It's not part of the DSM. It's not part of our diagnosis. It's not part of our well-being. Are they, are they in a state of joy? That's really what I want my patients to get to. But you're never going to get there if you don't involve Christ in your inner life or if you don't take your inner life to that spiritual level. All right. Chapter two. This is just, I'm just going to read the first sentence. The title is On Humble Submission. Do not be concerned about who is on your side or who is against you. Just be sure that God is with you. If your conscience is clear, be sure that he will defend you. The malice of others can never harm you as long as he is by your side. Chapter three, the peaceful person is just the first sentence. You must first have peace in your own soul before you can make peace between other people. Chapter four, on purity of mind and a simple intention. We are lifted up above earthly things by two wings, simplicity and purity. Simplicity regulates the intentions and purity the affections. Simplicity looks to God and purity finds him and savors him. No good work will hinder you if your heart is free from inordinate affections. On the contrary, you will grow in the way of perfection. 